Hello beautiful souls and welcome to your angels reading. This is going to be a reading on guidance from your angels. Uh, today I decided to do something a little bit different in terms of how to choose your piles and we'll go into those in a minute but first I'm going to kind of explain how this reading is going to go. So let me just show you my little book. Um, so with the angelic guidance reading, first we're going to have our oracle cards and that's going to be our energy check. With our witch oracle cards, it's going to be your embodying energy. So that's the energy that you are currently embodying. And then the crystal oracle cards are going to tell us a little bit about the angelic energies around you. And then with the tarot, it's going to be what your angels are guiding you towards. And then we have an extended, which is going to talk a little bit about what your angels are doing behind the scenes to help you manifest as well as what you are manifesting. And then we have an animal spirit guide. Oh, can I? Okay. Sorry, my cat just jumped up on the thing. Um, and then we have an animal spirit guide card that's going to tell us a little bit about the signs and the energy that it would be best for you to embody um, in order to manifest. So we've got a pretty full reading today. I'm super excited. And um, my angels and your angels are very excited as well. Um, I've had a really beautiful time shuffling for these and preparing for this reading. I felt really beautifully connected with you guys, and um, I really hope that you enjoy this. So, this is pile one, this is pile two, this is pile three, and this is pile four. For pile one, we have a feather with a white um, like snake skin shed on it. Um, I found this one day. Um, and then I have a dried out orange peel. And then I have a dried white rose. And I have a uh, snake skeleton that I found as well. So yeah, um, I'm going to now provide a 60 second meditation. That way you can sink into this reading and really find your space within it. Um, if you like this reading, please like and subscribe as well as please comment down below what you enjoyed, what you'd like to see more of and just give me some feedback because I love hearing from you guys. It really means the world to me. So thank you so much and that 60 second meditation will begin now. I hope that was enough for you. Thank you guys so much. Um, please do know before I begin this, I'm going to say a little disclaimer. Tarot does not control or dictate your life. These are readings on the current energy and you always have the power to shift it if that is not something that you enjoy. Um, also, if the pile that you originally select does not resonate, please go ahead and choose another one um, or possibly find another reading. Um, yeah. This is going to be beautiful and wonderful. Thank you so much and enjoy. Bye guys. Hello beautiful pile number ones and welcome to your reading. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so today we're going to be doing a reading on angelic guidance and so to start we have an energy check and these two cards are going to tell me what your energy is and these cards are going to tell me what your angel's energy is. And then we have some tarot cards right here to go into what they are leading you towards in your life and then we have an extended with these cards and we're going to look at 
um, what you are manifesting right now. And then we're going to look at what um, your angels are doing behind the scenes to help you manifest that. And then we have your um, spirit guide, or sorry, not spirit guide. We have your animal spirit guide um, and like what energy you're going to be embodying through that that's going to help you with these manifestations. So that extended will be linked below if you'd like to look into that. Um, I'm really excited about your reading and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to start by just saying that the energy that I feel off the bat is kind of frantic, but in the same way it's like this calm frantic. It feels like you guys have been through a lot recently and you're starting to really extract the lessons from that. So it seems like a pretty instrumental time in your life. <laughs> yeah, we have strength and resilience and we have earth magic. Um, Something that I did just realize with what you actually chose, um, with this feather, with the white baby snakeskin, um, two things. One, um, feathers are higher perspective and snakes, uh, their skin is like shedding the old and letting the new uh, come in so that growth can happen. Um, but two, I also found this, um, it was an offering from my guides during a period that was quite transitional in my life. Um, my sister was moving out of the house, I was about to move to a different state and it was kind of a sad day but in a really positive way. Um, it's that transition period um, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I feel like there is that kind of transition happening in your life right now and with the strength and resilience card I'm really seeing that because you know you have to embody strength and resilience to see the positivity in each of these hardships and like with this wind imagery I'm really seeing that you're letting things kind of blow away letting things pass through you and not holding on to feelings or holding on to certain situations as the only thing that will serve you anymore um i really feel that through this time you are coming into more acceptance and with this orange i'm really thinking of the solar plexus she's also wearing orange in this um i really feel like you are coming into a state of expression that you haven't had before which is going to be extremely important in this upcoming period um, with earth magic, I'm also seeing that you're embodying a much more grounded sense as well as a um, alchemization of old energies into something new. And by that, I mean you're taking past experiences and taking those lessons from them, extracting that and letting that be a guiding factor in your future and in your present decisions. Um, with these three... Um, elements right here. We have salt, which is extremely cleansing, um, and sage right here, as well as a white crystal, and I'm thinking that as quartz. So something that you might want to work with right now with your energy is some cleansing energy. Um, especially if you're going through transition, you really want to cleanse the old and bring in the new in a positive light. Um, yeah, so the energy that you're embodying is I'm really feeling like the strength tarot card. There's a lot of um, gentleness, but also a recognition for your kind of stronger energies and an appreciation for that. You might be coming into more of an appreciation for some of the, um, I'm hearing like the thicker skin that you've had to develop through some of the lessons in your life. Um, and just, I feel like there's been a stage in your life of time where you really had to put on a brave face and now you're learning that bravery is vulnerability and that is why transitions are able to come into your life. So now let's check out what the angelic energy around you is. We have Sanctuary of Light and Mugwort with Portal. We have Candle Quartz and Bleeding Heart with Show Yourself. And we have Selenite and Willow Tree with Goddess Spiral. What I'm finding really interesting about the Quartz and the Selenite is that these are both cleansing crystals, just like it's up here. Um, for reference, this is Selenite. Um, 
This is one of the most healing crystals. Oh wait, this is also selenite, silly me. Um, and then quartz is right here. Um, and those are some of the most like high vibrational energies um, that you can have. They are cleansing, they are light energy, they bring in positivity. Uh, selenite also is a naturally cleansing stone, so it can also cleanse other crystals. Um, and it's just an incredible stone overall. I highly recommend getting one or both of these crystals if that's something that calls to you. Um, but the angels around you are very high vibrational beings. Um, I think probably some archangels here, um, for sure, actually. Um, I am actually releasing some videos soon on angels, if you would like to check those out. Um, I just released one on the teal, and I'm going to continue releasing some on a few more angels, so please go ahead and check those out if that is calling to you. Um, but yeah, I feel like the energies, the angels around you are really, really, for one, trying to show themselves, but also encouraging you to show yourself and to be vulnerable and to see your self-worth and to heal yourself with a receptive energy. Um, and by that receptive energy, I really mean listening to guidance, feeling the guidance, and feeling all the emotions that you need to feel without repelling anything out of a hope of um, avoidance, because the more that you resist, the slower that healing is going to go, and I feel like your angels are really, you know, like this hand is like offering this light with all these hearts around it, and I feel like they're offering you so much love and guidance and they really, really, really just want the best for you, and they want to see you in a better place, in a place that you feel like you can grow from, in a place that feels grounded, in a place that feels like you are the leader of your own life, um, which is why they're presenting you with this portal. Um, you might be ascending right now in some kind of form, either in your life or spiritually, um, maybe even both, um, but it really feels like you're up leveling in your life to go to a new height and what they're surrounding you with is the opportunity to find that path and to keep going on it um one second i need to turn off the fan oh it's hot in here honey um <laughs> okay so with selenite and willow tree I'm really hearing like divine feminine guidance and love. Um, I'm really feeling a sense of like comradeship. Um, you might have some really dear friends or family um, either already in your life or coming in at this time. Um, or these are your angels who are just kind of surrounding you um, with this. This is um, Mother Maiden and I forget the other one. But it's basically about um, the beginning, the middle, and the end of cycles and kind of the repetition of that and the lessons and energies that you can extract from each stage of life. Um, this could be people around you and this could also be within your own cycles of life that you're getting this from. Um, some of the key words down here is rites of passage, dreams, and support. So I feel like some of your dreams are really starting to come into fruition. And with this rites of passage and portal right here, I really feel like you're starting to see your own worth enough to begin to understand that you deserve to ascend and to keep going and to grow. Um, something that I am hearing is that there will be moments of release in order to let this new energy in and don't resist them. Um, as painful as certain endings can be, it is so necessary to let things flow and move because holding on to certain situations, um, a job, people, anything, it can really prevent you from moving forward. Um, the imagery that I'm seeing as I say that is kind of the cycles of the seasons and how, you know, there's a time of respite and then there's the bloom of the flowers and then there's the drop of the seeds and there's, you know, the fruit and everything. Um, 
and there's just that whole cycle and there's a lot of death and rebirth within all of it and just try and think of yourself as your favorite flower or as your favorite piece of fruit and letting yourself go back into the earth in order to reseed and become a new plant um, that can then grow in soil that feels better for you. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing for the energy check. Let's now move into your beautiful tarot cards. Alright, so for your, one second, okay, for your tarot cards we have the Queen of Wands, the Five of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Ten of Rods. Yes, honey, what was I saying? Completion. Um, so... What your angels are guiding you towards is feeling what you need to feel. With this Seven of Swords, I'm seeing, honestly what I'm hearing is cut the bullshit, <laughs> sorry, um, but that's what I'm hearing. Um, hold on, is this centered? Yeah, what I'm really feeling with this is like, cut the crap, you know, and I think that's not only with you and your own subconscious and your thoughts that you kind of feed to yourself sometimes, which we all do. I think that there's a lot of reassurance in our lives that sometimes isn't the healthiest for us. Um, a lot of talking ourselves into thinking that certain situations are good for us whenever it's not. Um, and I feel like Spirit is kind of having you unveil a lot of those thoughts, but not only that, also unveiling other people's dishonesty um, around you. And that could just be, you know, little things, um, or it could just be more, honestly. Um, it could be situations, it could be... Um, I'm hearing, like, love bombing. I think there might have been someone in your life recently who promised more than they could give um, or will give. So I feel like there's kind of the removal of that energy for you right now. And I want to say that as painful as this energy can be, I mean, with the five of cups, there's that grief, but remember that there's always positivity on the other side. You still have two cups. And to me, that means that you have still built. And also five is the number of transition. Um, and so is 10. That's the end of a cycle. What I'm seeing with this uh, 10 of wands with this five of cups specifically is that you are holding so much right now. You are holding all of these emotions, all of these situations, all of these lessons, and you're trying to kind of get away without emotionally processing all of it. And that's something that you are going to have to eventually sit down and really put your mind to. Um, with the Queen of Wands, I want to show you this card actually because I really, really love this imagery. So here's the Queen of Wands. What I love about this card specifically is the volcano um, in the background because to me that really shows like I was talking about kind of that death and rebirth uh, volcanoes wipe out everything in its path that wasn't I guess it's not what well, wasn't meant to be there but what what had to go you know in evolution there is a certain time where the volcano is meant to erupt and in that time everything in its path 
has to be burnt and then reborn at a certain time whenever it's ready. And we have this sunflower right here and it's really making me think of you embodying that flower that we were talking about, embodying your light. Um, especially with the sunflower, I'm seeing that balance of um, masculinity with femininity because the sun is the embodiment of masculine energy whereas the moon is the embodiment of the feminine energy. Um, and with this sunflower, I'm really seeing like embracing your full self, embracing that masculine energy, taking charge of this situation and finding ways that are productive in order for you to let things move through you. Um, a lot of what masculine energy is, is making space for the feminine energy to feel safe and ex like it has the space to be expressive. Um, so I feel like you're starting to really know how to create that space. The other thing that I notice about this Queen of Wands card is that she looks quite solemn. She looks very contemplative, um, which is quite different than most Queen of Wands. Um, she, in my opinion, I feel like she's really taking this time to contemplate her next steps, but she's doing it with um, more of a focus of her best interests and of her genuine passions and her genuine desires. Um, something else that I see with the Queen of Wands in this deck is um, this right here. It always reminds me of a camera and I feel like there's kind of the capturing of this moment. Um, and it makes me think of whenever I take film photos specifically because I feel like it's catching the authenticity of a moment in a way that digital doesn't. And the reason that I'm saying this is because I feel like you are starting to see things in a more authentic light and capturing a lot more of the full picture with your life. Um, but also as you leave this phase, you're kind of taking those little snapshots of what you want to keep and letting go of what needs to be let go of. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you liked this video, please leave it a like. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more. I absolutely love reading for you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm going to move over to the extended now where we're going to look at what you're manifesting, what your angels are doing behind the scenes to help you manifest, and also what your spirit guide is um, through an animal and kind of see what um, energy you can embody to help you manifest things faster and sooner as well as kind of what signs are probably popping up for you through an animal so yeah thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the extended or in my next reading bye guys hello beautiful pile number twos and welcome to your reading i'm so happy to have you guys here thank you guys so much for being here with me and uh, today's message is going to be all about what your angels would like to say to you and how they're helping to guide your life i do want to start with what you chose being an orange peel um there are two things that I'm hearing is um, experiencing the zest of life and it's kind of that full experiencing of life and getting the best out of it. But it's also um, making lemonade out of lemons or what is it saying? Making, I almost said making lemons out of lemonade so that wouldn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> um, oh no. Um, but yeah, I really feel like you are doing a lot of alchemization in your life right now to actively pursue seeing the best in things and um, changing things into something that's a lot more doable for you while seeing the best out of what things are as they are. So yeah, um, for your reading to begin we have some oracle cards as an energy check and then we're going to go into the tarot. So for these two oracle cards you're going to tell me what your current um, embodied embodying energy is so kind of the energy that you're embodying and then down here we have the angelic energies around you so this is kind of the energy that's surrounding you and some of the angels that are kind of sending you certain energies we are then going to get into these tarot cards and we're going to see a little bit about where your angels are guiding you right now next we are going to then go into an extended and I have an animal spirit guide for you and then I have what you're manifesting and what your angels are doing behind the scenes to help you manifest that so that extended reading is going to be linked down below if you'd like to check that out and get some more juicy details um, 
but yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm really excited, guys. Here we go. So the embodying energy that you have right now is accept love, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, and change and progress. Okay. <laughs> this is beautiful. Something that I am hearing is if you have a difficulty accepting love from yourself, from others, from the universe, from your animals even, you are actively in an energy right now where you are learning why. There are blockages that are, I can feel it in my heart chakra, there's this blockage. But there's also this extreme amount of light that is just begging to burst out of you and it's already beginning to. I With these waterfalls, I feel like that's all the love that you have is just pouring out of you. And you have this giant cauldron of love and you're just like, Wah! you know <laughs> there's so much love around you and within you that is coming out in full force um, at this time and you're learning how to accept it back you know you're learning that you don't only have to give it out but you can also receive it and feel comfortable with that um, it's okay to receive love it's okay to receive love I promise you please receive love. I beg of you, please receive love. Um, and I come from this knowing that, you know, I struggle with this too. Um, and I definitely feel what you're going through where you kind of repel love because of past experiences where you associate love with something negative. However, the more that you accept that love and you embrace that love, the more that you are going to have more of an easier flow in your life and you're gonna get depleted far less frequently. Also, learning lessons is essential and love doesn't necessarily come with pain. Um, and that's kind of part of the change and progress that you're experiencing. I think on one hand, it has to do with change in your emotional state and in your realizations. However, I also think that this applies to your general life right now. I think that you have a lot of change coming up in your life and a lot of progress that you're making, um, specifically kind of in your career field or in some kind of structural there's like some kind of structural integrity um, that's changing in your life right now. Um, yeah, really beautiful. So I'm really seeing that you're embodying the empowerment of accepting love and also changing some of your thought patterns and your daily patterns in order to embrace and embody a more healthy way of living at this point. So let's check out what your angelic energies around you are and the energy that they're sending. So we have Ethiopian opal with fertile ground. Um, with the unicorns, I'm specifically seeing like channeling because um, they have that horn coming out the top of their head and I see it as like they have like a direct correlation with this opal right here, which is where they're channeling from and these rainbows, which is, you know, the balancing of their chakras. So I'm really feeling like you're channeling in more of a connection with your body too. And it's kind of speaking through you. And then we have a diopta, di oh my goodness, dio <laughs> um, dioptas and larkspar. Um, with past life healing, letting go of anger and forgiveness. Interesting. This beautiful green crystal right here, which I believe is dioptas. Pardon me if I'm not saying that right. I my pronunciation is so. I just you know what is fine. Um, <laughs> but with past life healing, I'm really feeling like you're getting to the root of things. Um, if you believe in past life, you might be doing. Um, some work with your past life. I actually have a video that's going to come out soon that's going to go over your past lives and also how to connect personally with some of your past lives, how to do certain meditations and um, certain oracle decks and stuff that you can get in order to further explore that. So that's super beautiful. Um, with past life healing, I'm also feeling like um, inner child healing. So some of the energies that are surrounding you might be kind of reminding you of your childhood at this time. And that is to help you actively 
heal those parts of you that need help. Yeah, we were talking about accept love and some of those blockages and a lot of those come from um, our childhood and the way that we were raised or relationships that we had um, whenever we were younger. Um, you know, younger meaning literally yesterday could be then. So <laughs> literally any time. Um, but there's something from your past, um, either in this lifetime or also in your past lives that you are actively working through right now. It feels like a heavy kind of jello like energy. There's a slowness to it. And that is on purpose. Know that your angels are slowing you down on purpose. They are actively creating time for you to really slow down and have to actively process things and let them settle and let things just fall as they may and accept where they are. That way you can come into this more fertile energy where you can start co-creating with the universe and you can start being at a place where you feel ready to start channeling into higher powers and creating light energies and I know that you are an alchemist in your energy meaning that you can take energy that's a little bit harsher and bring it into the light and see the positive in things and I feel like through time that's kind of what you're doing you're going from this darkness into this light energy and seeing the positive and that is actively bringing in karmic balance in your life in a positive way um, as you convert these energies you bring that light into your life and it's a beautiful energy and your angels are really helping you I'm hearing that they're holding your hand you know so if you feel alone hold out your hand and let them hold your hand. Um, I am hearing some of you guys might get like chills on your body or like all of your hairs will kind of stand up whenever they're around. Um, you also might hear like whispers or something. I know that I do every once in a while. Actually, before reporting this reading, I heard like whispers and I knew it was my angels. I wasn't that concerned, but yeah. Let's see the last one. We have the green man with a moss agate and ritual and ceremony, new spirit guides and tree wisdom. Beautiful. So you guys might be called to look into some new spirit guides soon, um, such as new angels, um, new goddesses, new kinds of uh, religion. <clears throat> My throat chakra got really blocked up as I was saying that. So there might be something that's kind of blocking you personally from wanting to explore outward or feeling like you have the ability to connect. Um, I do want to note that I do have some um, angel videos coming up soon. I have one that just came out on the teal and then I have a few that I'm going to post over time. Um, I also have a video on the goddess Oshun if you'd like to check that out. Um, <clears throat> but also if there's any energies that are calling out to you personally, please do check those out. Uh, with the green man and moss agate, I am also feeling like a deep connection with the universe is something that you might be feeling. I'm feeling kind of this pulling inward energy towards yourself. Um, and it's kind of this feeling of creating space to really love yourself. I feel like with accept love, it's not only outward, it's inward. I feel like you're really learning how to accept your own love and accept that you deserve that love and that you will find that love within yourself, all the love that you need. So, yeah. Um, you might be really called to go on hikes or on a walk or just be by the water or be by a tree. Um, I'm hearing tree hugging, <laughs> which um, I definitely do. <laughs> I'm not gonna... <laughs> no shame, Mr. Orangutan. Sorry, I don't know why that's what came to my mind. Um... <laughs> Sorry, that's kind of goofy. Um, I am seeing this... Um... It's not a pine cone, silly goose. It's not a chestnut either. What is it? An acorn. An acorn. <laughs> um, and these oak leaves. And what I'm seeing is you are going from this seed to a bud, to a tree, to this massive oak tree. And you're embodying all of your energy. And all of you guys are at different stages right now. But you're really learning to crack yourself open. Because, I mean, acorns, they have to be cracked open in order to let the sprout come out. And I feel like there's this um, energy of an offering coming to you from yourself or from the universe where you're really going to have to crack open and let your love shine out and let it 
come in because that cracking open also lets resources come into the acorn. That way it can receive that and therefore grow. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful energy. I'm feeling a very outward energy with you guys. It's like there's that inward kind of um, seclusion to bring your energy in. That way you can bring it outward. Um, it's kind of this balance um, that's really fascinating with you guys that is kind of going inward and outward as you progress. So that is what I'm seeing for this portion of the reading. Let's now move into the tarot to see a little bit more about where your angels are guiding you towards right now. Okay, beautiful souls. So now we're going to go into the tarot. We're going to look a little bit further into where your angels are guiding you towards right now. I don't know why I'm doing this accent. I kind of like it though. Feels a little bit New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go to bump up the party, everybody. Okay, I need to I need to move forward, honey. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um four of cups in reverse. Oh, I love seeing the Four of Cups in reverse. Let me tell you, it's one of those cards whenever you get it in reverse and you're like, oh my god, this is incredible. I also love the Hermit card. Yes, honey. Oh, this makes so much sense. Okay, and the Knight of Cups. Oh, why is this so beautiful? I love your energy. What in the hell? Okay. <laughs> oh my god, and the Knight of Swords. Yes. Yes, honey. Okay. <laughs> Let me make sure that my setup doesn't look bad. Because um, we don't need no crooked energy for you. Okay. We don't need no crooked energy. Okay. <laughs> um, it's going to be crooked anyway, knowing me. Okay. Anyway. So. Oh, I love this. I love this energy so much. Okay. This card feels kind of like separate, but not, if that makes sense. Okay. This is making me think, these two cards are making me think of the change in progress card specifically because movement. Um. <laughs> and I love that you're moving from a knight of swords to a knight of cups. You're going from a place where you're really in your head to in your heart. You're moving the processing from your head to your heart, if that makes sense. Um, that's something that my partner always tells me. Um, I'll be really in my head about processing something and I'll be like, move it into your heart. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, it took me so long to realize what he meant by that. Um, and the reason I'm going into all this is because sometimes we need support. But what I'm seeing for you with the hermit right here is that the support that wants to come in for you is from spirit itself. Um, and that might come in the form of a human, but it might come in just through the voice of your own inner guidance, honey. Um, especially with that kind of seclusion energy, I really feel like it comes from within and without. Um, and sometimes you need someone to remind you to move it into your heart, and sometimes you have to do that for yourself. I am also seeing a kind of slowing down um, and the realization, especially with um, the Nine of Cups, that things come in divine time. Um, same with the Hermit, you know, you're walking the path that you need to in divine time. You're taking up the wisdom that you need to. You're going on this journey that's uh, led by hope and by um, just your own inner guidance and your intuition and you're tapping into energies that you didn't even know that you had through the power of being alone, of secluding, of taking that time. With the Four of Cups in reverse, I'm seeing that you're starting to wake up to some of the guidance. Um, if you've been called to alone time, I am seeing that you're starting to take that. You're starting to realize why. You're starting to realize how that's truly helping you and actively pursuing the betterment of your emotional state by moving things through you. Were you the pilot I was talking about the wind? No, sorry. That was pile one. Um, sorry. Feels kind of like a similar energy though, where you're letting things move through you and letting things move through your whole body, not just holding it within and not just keeping it um, at the level of processing through your head. It really, really feels like you're absorbing things. That way you can alchemize them and release them. Um, Yes, because with yours, we were talking about moving this kind of harsher energy, or not really harsh, it's kind of just like 
it's harder energy to work with into this light, into this beautiful light. And that's exactly what this feels like here. It's kind of moving from the darkness into the light as you take time to truly process things through. Um, also with the green man card and kind of that, you know, seclusion into nature with the hermit card, I, I really think about taking that path. Um, and it tends to kind of feel like they're walking down um, a nature path in my mind where they're like, <laughs> you know how people go backpacking like through the mountains um, and they're like, <laughs> I'm hearing the song and I would walk 500 miles. I can't sing. Don't even, don't even ask. I lost my ring. Oh no. Oh, there it is. <sighs> This is a protection stone, actually. You might want to uh, look into doing some protection around you or your home right now. Um, but, yeah. Um, but I always think about walking down a path and um, feeling kind of safe in that seclusion and in that space where you're able to be completely vulnerable. Something that this is reminding me of is um, on my hikes, whenever I realize that there's no one around and I've been walking for like a while, um, I'll start talking to myself and I'll be channeling and I'll... I had uh, one hike where I basically dedicated it to spirit where I gave thanks for everything that spirit has provided me with and been kind enough to guide me to. Um, and I spent a lot of my hikes um, basically working through a lot of my emotional things that I need to work through. And that might be something that's really good for you is taking that time away. That way you can love yourself. That way you can talk to yourself. That way you can channel for yourself. That way you can feel what you need to feel without any judgment or any fear of how someone is going to perceive that. Um, I'm really feeling like there's a um, expression of an emotion that needs to be had you know whether that means crying screaming laughing um running around the block like it could literally be anything but taking that time to be alone is extremely important you can take a day take a day for yourself hon and just take a hike just drive your car listen to music journal do anything that feels right for you and do not worry about not showing up to be in a situation, you know? Um, I think that there's a lot of expectation in society that, you know, like, if you're in a relationship, you're always with them. Or, um, you know, as a friend, like, you always have to be there. And the thing is, is you cannot show up for other people if you're closed off yourself, if you're not accepting your own love, if you are not actively pursuing the betterment of yourself and feeling in a place to receive from other people and feeling in a place to you know that saying of like you can't love someone else whenever you don't love yourself it's kind of that energy I don't get the fact that you don't love yourself it's that you don't let it in enough it's that you don't experience it enough it's that you don't explore it enough I think that you do love yourself and if you don't actively feel like you do right now, you will. Um, but I think that it's a relationship that you need to cultivate more. Um, think of yourself as a friend or a family member or a loved one, because you are, honey. And you need to actively pursue cultivating that relationship. Um, and a good example of this is a few people in my life, including myself, will dedicate one day a week to myself, to themselves. And um, that day, uh, we barely go on our phones, we barely talk to people, um, <laughs> we go out and we do what we want to do, um, and we're alone, and that is so pleasant, it's some of the most relaxing time that you have, even if that's only, let's say, like, eight hours, that is a divine amount of time to do so much inner work and to really work through the things that you need to work through, so call that time that's really what your angels are guiding me towards to tell you is to take the time that you need to let your emotions run through you and to let things come in divine time as they need to you're doing a beautiful job at listening to wisdom at feeling wisdom and uh, deriving that from places but you need to apply it to yourself and not just other people so yeah that's what i'm seeing for this portion of the reading um I really, really hope that you appreciated this reading and that it applied to you um, in a wonderful way. I am going to move into the extended. 
Um, please leave a like and a comment on this video if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe if you would like to see more. It means the world to me to get feedback from you guys and see what you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much. Um, in the extended, we're going to look at what you are manifesting, what your angels are doing behind the scenes, and the animal spirit guide that is coming into your life as a sign and also that energy of embodiment that's helping you manifest things. So that'll be linked below. Thank you guys so much and I will guys, <laughs> sorry, I will see you guys in the extended or I will see you guys in my next reading. Bye guys, thank you. Hello beautiful pile number threes and welcome to your reading. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is going to be your reading all about what your angels want to say to you right now. So for the kind of breakdown of how this is going to go, first we're going to start with an energy check and these three tarot cards are going to tell me a little bit about your energy. And then these energy, or sorry, these tarot cards are going to tell me a little bit about your, in, your angel's energy that's around you right now. And then we have these tarot cards for the main reading that's going to tell me a little bit about uh, the way that your angels are trying to guide you right now, kind of where they're trying to guide you and how they are. And then I have an extended that I am super excited about in this reading. And we have what you are manifesting right now. And then a little bit about what your angels are doing behind the scenes to help you manifest, as well as a spirit animal card to go a little bit further into um, the like messages that are coming up in your life like maybe if this animal is showing up for you but also the energy to embody from this animal to tell you a little bit more about how to manifest things for yourself so yeah I'm super excited a lot of cards wanted to come out for this pile it's kind of insane um so yeah I'm beyond excited about this so let's uh, let's begin Alright, so to start off with your energy, we have ground and center. We have affirmation for healing of the heart and water magic. Beautiful. Okay. So, let us begin. Um, I love this for so many reasons. Um, where do I want to begin? So with ground and center and with this kind of feeling of meditation, I'm really feeling like you're at a place right now where you're starting to slow down a little bit and start focusing on a little bit more of your um, inner work and your inner healing, um, as well as kind of noticing the energies that are around you and starting to really focus in on kind of shrinking your outside influences in order to let your inner peace kind of keep coming outward and keep showing itself in a way that maybe you weren't able to before because through that I'm also seeing with this water magic that there's some kind of cleansing happening and by that I mean you know, either you're cleansing your own energy, you're cleansing around the energy around you, um, you could be kind of cleansing your environment. Um, something that is coming to my mind with um, water magic is like a lot of stuff that I do for cleansing myself um, energy wise is I'll actually like take a shower. Um, a lot of people will take a bath as well if you have one. But um, with water magic, I'm really feeling this sense of kind of curiosity and fun through this dolphin but also taking care of yourself and um, going with the flow. I'm seeing ducks and um, the reason I'm seeing ducks is because their symbolism has a lot to do with playfulness but also with going through the tumultuous waters of life and being able to ebb and flow with them. Uh, they're also really cute um, but I feel like a duck and a, and a dolphin they feel very similar to me in the way that they're playful. However, one is below the surface and one is above the surface. And I feel like you're starting to find that kind of balance between going really deep into your emotions and being really grounded and spending that time alone and then coming up to play and coming up to be a part of the earth and be a part of community and the society in the way that feels right for you. Because you're learning to take that time underneath the surface in order to find out what's really going to serve you whenever you come back up. So it's a really beautiful balance that you're finding at this time. For affirmation of healing of the heart, I'm just finding this beautiful overall in so many ways. Um, 
but the main thing that I am seeing is that you're starting to take more charge through healing your past. Um, I'm hearing past from past lives as well, so if that's something that you um, resonate with, definitely take that. Um, but I'm feeling like there's a healing a lot of the perceptions and a lot of the past experiences that you've held really closely. Um, with this water magic, I'm also kind of seeing this dethawing of the heart or um, dethawing of stale energy that you were holding on to for a long time and letting it flow through you, flowing through your heart and flowing out of you, letting it find that movement again, that way you can release it. Um, so for healing, you might also have someone with you, whether that's a companion animal, um, a figure who you respect, it could be a friend, it could be a significant other, it could be anyone. It could even be um, a healthy coping mechanism, uh, such as journaling and stuff like that. So there is some guidance while you're healing through um, your heart space, and that could also be multiple things that are helping you. Um, try not to rely on one thing, and if you notice yourself going into an unhealthy coping mechanism, I would definitely kind of step back from that and start to discover a little bit more about what is going to serve you best in the long term. So now let's look into if that resonates with you. Wonderful. Um, if not, maybe try out another pile, but I'm going to now move into the angelic energies around you. So we have Pearl and Lerimar with Let Go. That's a lot what I was talking about with the heart and uh, the water magic. And then we have Lava Stone and Red Hot Poker with My Body is a Safe Space. Uh, that makes a lot of sense with the going underneath and kind of finding safety and solitude. Rose Quartz and Olive Tree with Alchemy of Love, Peace Offerings, Compassion, and Venus Energy. So that has a lot to do with this healing of the heart energy. And with the alchemy, I'm feeling like it's connecting with this ground and center because it's kind of that time that you're spending to really plant your roots and start to discover the way that you want to transform situations into something better for the future and you're allowing yourself to plant those roots. So then we have Grandmother Moonstone with Cycles of Change. Um, I love that this is illuminating boundaries and new beginnings. That is absolutely beautiful. With Grandmother Moonstone, I am um, hearing something about ancestors, maybe a grandmother for you, um, some kind of figure that might be showing up um, as an energy in your life right now um, to kind of try and help guide you through this time. Um, your angels, the energy that they're really taking on right now is trying to create the space for you to slow down that way you can truly feel these emotions. Um, so if you feel like certain things are slowing down in your life um, or certain things are kind of shifting, um, know that that is the universe's and your angel's way of creating space for you to begin doing more healing and clearing at this time. Um, as well as the alchemization. Um, with the alchemy, what that's really talking about is taking healing and pain and um, sadness and all of the the feelings that we hold on to and realizing when it's time that they no longer serve us that we are able to process those and then move into a space of further healing that way we can begin to start creating steps in which we are creating love in our lives we are seeking out love we're seeking out better things for ourselves and we are actively putting a step forward in the right direction instead of trying to run from something we begin walking in a direction that we know is going to be better for our higher selves and for our current selves and for our future selves. Um, so yeah, that's kind of with the cycles of change especially. There might be certain shifts um, that you weren't expecting, even some that you were. Um, it's going to be really important during these cycles as you're being guided to sit down throughout the stages in these cycles. Um, for example, say that, oh, what is a good example? Say that you're let's say moving homes, because that can be applied in a lot of ways, you know, moving through energies in different ways. But 
you know, you're going to want to evaluate what your home's like before you start looking for a new place. Observe what you like about it. Observe what you would like in the next place. Observe what makes you feel at peace there. Then start looking for a new place and keep coming back to this and going through these cycles where you're recognizing that you're in a stage of transition and it's okay to be stressed. It's okay to be feeling uneasy. It's okay to feel a little bit annoyed whenever certain things don't work out, but know that it's for your highest good. And you keep coming back and reevaluating. What do I want? What do I not want? What makes me happy here? Why am I remaining here, you know, like what is the importance, what's the lesson of me being here still, um, and trying to like extract the good out of it. Now you found a place and it's moving time and kind of sit down and observe as you are moving out of the house, as you're packing things, how that feels for you, how the transition feels, how letting go feels and give yourself the time to really feel what it feels like to let go of certain things and to let things pass, but also to appreciate what was there while it was there. And then you're moving into the new place and you get to feel this new energy as you come into this new cycle and you're setting up your things and you're kind of observing like, do I still want this? How do I want to set this up in this new place so it has some kind of new meaning to me? You know, what is the way that I want to take my skill, my trade, my belongings and kind of shift them into this space? Are there new skills that I want to pick up in this new phase? Are there things that I'm going to need to help me go into this new phase? Um, and kind of taking that appreciative moment while you're there before you unpack and after you unpack to really see how much beautiful transformation you've been able to go through after you've lived there for a month even sitting down and being like wow look how far we've come from where we've been and that applies to any cycle that you go through it's those stages of appreciation and evaluation that are going to help serve you to continue through the next cycles um Oh, that was beautiful. Um, with my body as a safe space, what I'm really seeing is um, the idea of finding a home within the self. Um, oh, yeah. You know, with this, I'm also feeling um, insecurities popping up. And this kind of red is making me think about the root chakra and the ways that sometimes we can begin to feel unstable and with insecurity comes instability and with instability comes insecurity and it's kind of this catch-22 that's a hard rift um, and at certain times we are going to have to look at ourselves without any dysmorph dysmorphic ideas of who we are or how we look or the way that we perceive ourselves or the world we're gonna have to shed those using this water magic like you're doing already and shed those let them go with the lava I'm really thinking about um, kind of letting things burn down into ash and having to restart um but also the perseverance perseverance that certain aspects of our ourselves will have even through the washing and what this means is we are only letting go of what isn't serving us and the angels that are around you are really trying to wash out energies that are not serving you. So if certain things feel like they burn, certain things hurt, certain things that are leaving your life are painful, it is only temporary. And just remember that it is always for your highest good. You know, some people are right for a season. Some people are right for longer. Some situations are the same way, you know. And it's okay to let go and to surrender, to release. Um... I like how this card says patterns and triggers because it's interesting how we were talking about up here these um, coping mechanisms and really making sure that we're stepping back in order to ensure that we are treating ourselves with the respect and the love that we deserve. So what I'm really seeing for your angels and yourself is that they're creating space for a new cycle for you that's going to be much better for you, but there is a, a period of time where you're really having to ground, center, take space, and pause in order to let that new cycle come in. So beautiful. Let's move into the tarot now. I'm going to get a quick little sip of water as well, actually. Getting a little thirsty out here. If you're watching this in the winter, I hope you guys are staying warm. I'm currently, it's getting to like two degrees outside. 
and it's pretty cold where I'm living so I hope that you guys are staying much warmer than I am um, definitely stay warm and safe and enjoy the snow if it's around and if you are lucky and you don't experience such cold winters I am slightly envious and I'm happy for you <laughs> I hope that you are enjoying your half winter <laughs> yeah okay here we go so Okay, now if we are looking into um, where your angels are guiding you towards and kind of the ways that they're showing up in your life. So just, oh my god, I love that. We have the Page of Cups. I feel like that really goes back to that water magic where you're kind of learning that vulnerability. And the beautiful thing about the Page of Cups too is the page talks about potential especially. Because, um, you know, whenever you become a page then you go to the knight and then the queen and then the king and you have that potential to kind of keep moving up into the next positions. The Page of Cups also talks about kind of curiosity, kind of funny energy that's spontaneous and exciting and um, things that are moving with the flow of life and you're just kind of allowing things. Um, also with his position, it feels like, you know, some kind of form of conquering. So I feel like your angels are guiding you in the direction of kind of conquering these hardships, overcoming them feeling like you can embrace the the way that life has shifted for you even through the pain and the hardship and through the times where you've had to slow down there's always going to be an ascension afterwards i'm also seeing like these like lilies on um their clothing and to me that's making me think about how those seeds will last like hundreds of years and then they can sprout after that um, and I feel like there's this long-lasting energy that you've really been kind of sifting through and waiting to blossom outward. And that's why these certain things of clearing have had to come through. Because you've been waiting, your soul has been waiting to blossom in a way that you weren't able to originally. Beautiful. Oh my god. Okay, sorry. That, that made me excited. So we have judgment. And the first thing that I heard whenever I flipped over this card was a spiritual awakening. Um, this could also be like, say you've been going to therapy or something like that. And it's kind of the awakening to a new way of um, life that you want to lead or an awakening to like going back to the home example, an awakening of that aha moment whenever you find the right place and you know exactly why and it's your intuition that's completely guided you. With the figures on this card, I'm really seeing kind of this idea of breaking down completely to be rebuilt and listening to the higher um, guidance above you and with you at all times. I'm also seeing XX, which is number 20, and to me that's making me think of the fact that you are so close because the world card is next and that is the completion of the cycle and I feel like you are so close to an ending you're in that last like straw kind of um, where you are going through these lessons that are going to help you complete these and you're starting to discover what you want to keep in this cycle and what you want to leave behind um, something that is coming to my mind is during um, the was it the new moon I did it during the full moon, but it would actually be better to do during the new moon. Well, I mean, either way is fine. You could even do it at a, during a crescent moon. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just at any point, um, my partner and I decided that we wanted to... And by the way, I've done plenty of spells alone, too. Um, it's fine to do it alone. But we decided that we wanted to write down a whole page of what we're grateful for in this cycle. And then on the other side of the page, we wrote a whole page of what we want to bring into the next cycle. And then on a separate page, we wrote what we want to um, leave behind from our last cycle. We burned the page of what we wanted to no longer have in our last cycle. And then the, um, the page that we wanted to keep, we actually have hung up in our home right now. And that's kind of been our guide and we've kind of looked at those intermittently and kind of found gratitude in what we want to keep and what we have and been able to kind of let go of some of the things that we have no longer wanted in our lives. One of those things that's coming to my mind is judgment of the self. We both really wanted to let go of that and um, appreciate the fact that we can have judgment for ourselves in a more constructive way. And that's something that we've actively been seeking out um, in our communication with each other, with others, and with ourselves. So that might be something that applies to you right now. 
All right. It's a nine of pentacles. What I'm hearing, this is an incredible reading, may I say. Uh, you have some really powerful cards. The nine of pentacles, what they're leading you towards is stability and abundance. Um, this is also a golden eagle and golden eagles specifically talk about new beginnings transformation um and also giving your energy in a way that makes you feel um in balance with the people around you and with your own self um kind of having that self-respect to pull away and the respect for others to be there whenever you have the energy to um I mean, with the Nine of Pentacles, though, it talks a lot about abundance. It talks a lot about finding a place where you are stable enough to where you can feel comfortable and confident in what you have and in the fact that it will stay for as long as you need it to. So where your angels are guiding you right now is to find things of stability. So, you know, as I was talking about things kind of washing away, something that might have transitioned for you is your hours might have been cut for winter if you're watching it then. Uh, you might have lost your job. You might have uh, lost a lot of passion in a job and you really want to leave. And the, the reason that these shifts have happened or the reason that your job has become so unpleasant or things have kind of changed for you is because it's time to move to something different. Um, nine is also... <laughs> the last number before a cycle closes. So something that we're really seeing is new beginnings, cycles ending. Um, so it makes a lot of sense why we're kind of focusing on that ground and center right now, because you kind of have to ground yourself in the present moment in order to feel ready to move on to the next moment. Um, but as you're transitioning, it's so important to stay in the present moment. So where else are they guiding you? Oh my god, we have a nine and a nine. Very nice. Yep, definitely an ending. Um, with the nine of wands, though, I'm hearing that, you know, as much as they're trying to lead you to this place of comfort, don't put yourself in a box. Don't put yourself in a place where you are protecting yourself from people to an extent that is no longer good for you. And the reason I say this is because in the five of wands, it's people fighting. And then in the Six of Wands, he wins. In the Seven of Wands, he realizes that he won a battle, not the whole war. So they're fighting again, and this time he's in it alone. And then in the Eight of Wands, it's kind of fast movement, it's targeted movement. And in the Nine of Wands, they found a place of peace and they are staying in it. The thing about that is that whenever you stay in a place of um, stability and complacency that's blocked off from the rest of the world, you no longer learn from anything because you're in this bubble that you've created. Think of it as like um, putting yourself in a, like in, a, in a hamster ball or something and um, you know you have this protection around you and for a period of time it's nice you know there's no other energy that's able to get in and kind of impact you but after a while you kind of get bored of the fact that you're always experiencing the same thing and there's a lack of new learning opportunities and experiences. Um, something that I am hearing is that the more blocked off that you are the less that you let these things come in. That's why it's so important for you to focus on that water magic and that grounding and stability. That way you can feel grounded in where you're at and able to actively start opening up as you feel comfortable and therefore letting in that abundance and letting these new beginnings really start shining through. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> wow. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I love tarot. Um, okay, so now we have the Seven of Cups. So something that I am seeing is that your angels are providing you with a lot of options in your life. They're providing you with a lot of um, knowledge and opportunities for research, opportunities for new forms of growth, opportunities for death and rebirth and, um, and your ego specifically, um, and kind of clarity as well as a lack of clarity at certain times in order to get you to really understand what you want and what you don't want and why you want certain things and why you don't want certain things. Um, this is taking me back to, I was thinking yesterday about tarot itself and how sometimes the reader will say messages that don't completely resonate with you. Um, and they'll kind of tell you the opposite of what you want to do. Um, for example, I had a reader tell me that I needed to leave my boyfriend at one time, and I was like, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> and I know, I know that I wasn't meant to, because I talked with the universe for a very long time about it, and I followed my intuition. And I think that the reason that I received this reading was because at a certain point, 
you have to learn when you want to step away from something due to insecurity versus when you want to step away from something because it's not working for you. When you want to step away from something because you're not willing to work on yourself. And that's where I was at. And then I had to move forward. I just got the highest pitch in my ear. So that's definitely confirmation. Um, but you guys might be debating moving away from something or giving up on one of your dreams. I just heard that. Do not give up on your dreams out of insecurity. Do not let other people tell you what you can and cannot do. This border, though it may protect you for a period of time, you cannot go out and pursue your dreams whenever there's a wall in the way. And those wands, those are your insecurities right now. But the thing is, is that you have the choice to continue moving and you don't need to block out the light. You don't need to try and figure out everything right now but know that the choice is there for you whenever you are ready so yeah um this is beautiful your angels are basically guiding you to happiness abundance ascension um and the power of choice as well as recognizing your own ability and power within um I'm also hearing that they're pushing you towards education in a certain realm. Um, <laughs> by the way that that just shifted, I feel like non-conventional education. So like maybe not like school or something, but, you know, learning something from someone on um, YouTube or Patreon <laughs> or um, just someone's kind of like courses or a book or something that's interesting you at the moment. Um, yeah. That does remind me, I am starting a Patreon, and it's going to go over a little bit about tarot and herbalism and stuff, so if you're interested in that, it should be linked below, and yeah. Um, I am going to move into the extended now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. This has been absolutely wonderful for me, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We are now going to go ahead and look into what you are manifesting, what your angels are doing behind the scenes, and the spirit guide that is behind all of this. Hello beautiful pile number fours, and welcome to your reading. If you chose this beautiful snake skeleton, then this is going to be your reading. I absolutely love this. Um, I actually found this one day whenever I was hanging out with my sister and my best friend and we were going swimming and um, we were just kind of admiring this because it made us think a lot about um, the death and the rebirth cycle as well as the beauty of kind of the things that we can leave behind um, as well as like, you know, the lessons that we've left behind, the impacts that we've made on people and um, just kind of the beauty in that as well as the fact of um, kind of longevity of our souls and of our ways that we're able to touch people so deeply with our spirit even whenever we're not around. Um, snakes also talk about um, you know, kind of shedding your skin and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's a really beautiful energy. Um, for your energy check, these are going to be your cards representing your energy currently. And then these are the energies of the angels around you. So if this feels like it resonates, beautiful. And if not, maybe check out another pile or another reading. Um, next we have, after that, we are going to have the tarot cards talking about where your angels are leading you right now. And then we are going to have the extended reading that goes over what you are manifesting, what your angels are doing behind the scenes as well as a spirit guide for you um, in the form of an animal so let us begin so to start with your energy we have make a move I love that sunset right there and um oh my goodness okay I don't know what kind of fish these are but they're making me think of catfish and the beautiful thing about catfish is it's making me think about um, Catfish have a very strong electric uh, kind of like rod, but also, I don't know if it's a rod, <laughs> a vibration or something, um, but 
they're kind of like electric in the fact that they are able to really make things happen and protect themselves. Um, they also are able to live in some of the murkiest waters that other animals cannot live in. So what that's telling me is that something that you're kind of doing is making you move out of murky waters. With these otters, I'm seeing a kind of playful contemplative energy and they're kind of sitting on the sidelines wondering if they should get in, kind of feeling like, you know, am I getting in the way of this? And I feel like there might be people in the outskirts that are kind of admiring what you're doing right now and kind of waiting to jump into your life because they're trying to see which direction that you're trying to head with you kind of facing away with this from this person um, but also working in unison with them it's really making me think about um, how you and someone else that you are either working with that you know or that you don't know yet um, are kind of on this same path and um, kind of doing it individually but together and you're kind of syncing up um, if this is someone that you know you know there have been lessons that you've been able to kind of teach each other and help each other through um, as you've shed this skin you know you've kind of shown them how they can shed that skin and they've shown you how they shed a different kind of skin and so on and so forth <laughs> you know going back to the snake example here um, but yeah I'm really seeing this kind of playful energy that you're stepping into that still is uh, contemplative and thoughtful with these wands you know I'm really seeing that you're putting magic into your life and you know they're quite directed as well they're both directing upward and I'm thinking as above so below so there's kind of this energy that you're embodying where you're a little bit more clear about what you want and working with the higher self and um, with your angels to kind of direct your energy towards what you truly want. With the sun setting as well, I'm really feeling like there's kind of this ending where you're moving out of these murky waters into something more clear and beautiful and you're kind of letting the sun set on certain things at this point. And then we have meditation to dig deep. Whenever I saw these plants, I actually thought of um, a four-leaf clover. I know that it's not a clover at all, um, but it really was making me think about luck, um, as well as the fact that clovers are nitrogen-fixing, and um, a lot of people see them as weeds, so they take them out of the ground. The thing about clovers is that they actually fix the nitrogen, and therefore the plants around them are able to grow, because nitrogen is needed. However, nitrogen is... Um, at, <laughs> sorry, I'm going into a whole, like ecology lesson um but you know there's atmospheric nitrogen and clovers are one of the few plants that transfer that uh, atmospheric nitrogen into being into the soil which is needed and the reason that I'm saying this is because I feel like there have been certain things in your life that you've wanted to pluck away certain lessons that you've learned where you've felt like that didn't serve you or that wasn't good for you and you're starting to realize that you were able to alchemize that into something that was actually beautiful and it was needed for you. I'm also seeing with them digging, they're finding all these crystals under there. And I feel like that's a little bit about you, you know, it's like you are this diamond, you are, you know, you've hidden certain parts of yourself though, and there are parts of your personality that you've really hidden away, but they are gems and they are one in a million. Um, once again, we see this idea of teamwork and it's a dog to be fair, um, but it is still a form of teamwork and a form of fun that's getting you there as well as with these orange gloves i'm thinking of the solar plexus and it's that form of expression that's really coming forward and you're starting to use your creative expression to guide you um oh that's why you're pointing your energy you're pointing your energy with uh passion and with creativity and with um i'm feeling a lot of like intuition and um feminine energy um and through feminine energy i really mean intuition receptivity and um a little bit more like creative flair i feel um but yeah with the color purple i am really seeing um once again going back to that intuitive side so something that you might be doing right now is really focusing on meditation focusing on your past experiences and the lessons that you're moving <laughs> lessons that you've learned and making a move past those so there's a lot of alchemization as to your past to your present um you're really really stepping into your intuition to let it guide you into where you truly want to go and letting your passions lead the way so if that sounds like you beautiful i'm going to now move into the angelic energies around you oh my goodness yep we have gold and apple with rewriting 
Well, so I was saying that you're one in a million, and gold is quite rare. Um, also, I'm seeing Libra energy with these scales balancing, as well as the Justice card. So the angels that are around you... Oh, sorry. And we have re Oh, well, it's rewriting, but I guess rewiring also works. Um, but with these scales, kind of, I'm seeing... You know, there's that karmic balance happening. There's that kind of finding of the the ways that the scales will tip. You know, as you learn these lessons, it's like, okay, how do I feel more balanced in this degree? And how do I feel more balanced in that? And like, you're finding your place where you're like, okay, now I feel comfortable where I'm at and it's okay for me to sit here now. Um, with gold, I'm also kind of seeing like luxury. There's this idea with your angels that they want you to be comfortable. They want you to feel confident in yourself you know we have um this crown right here and i'm seeing that they really want you to embody the fact that you are beautiful you are one of a kind you are just someone who is needed in this world just like everyone else you have your specialty and they want you to see that you are special as well and that you are beautiful in all of the ways that you want to be you can show how wonderful you are. You have skills that other people don't have and they have skills that they that you don't have and therefore you can fill in those blanks. And something that they're trying to help you see is kind of the balance between you and other people and the way that you can work in harmony with these people. With rewriting, um, oh yeah, it says, um, her story and healing distorations. And I think that this is interesting. Wait, no, distorting. You know what? I can't even read. It's fine. Um, but it's making me think about what I was talking about with these clovers over here. They want you to see that these lessons, these experiences that you've gone through have been essential. Um, yeah. So then we have golden topaz and yellow rose with abundance, raising your vibration, light missions, and raw activations. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the reason that you've been going on this journey has really been to light you up into um, the recognition of your higher self and the recognition of how important that you are and to really see... Um, I'm sorry, I keep thinking about how this pile feels really closely associated with pile three, especially now seeing the yellow roses here. There's just been a lot of overlap. It almost feels like this is like the next step. Um, so if that's called to you at all, I would recommend watching that. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. I just, I had to pause on that. But um, yeah, with abundance, I'm really seeing that they want you to recognize the abundance around you as well as within you, the abundant of... The abundance of love, the abundance of care, the abundance of um, opportunity, the abundance of transformation within you. Um, and they also want to provide abundance externally to make you feel at peace. Um, we are seeing this yellow right here, which is, um, it's really making me think about finding the power within you and using the kind of expressive nature that you have in powerfully kind of channeling that into something that feels right for you specifically transformation because we have butterflies going around here and it's making me think about how butterflies are symbolic of transformation um because they go from one life form of a caterpillar to going in and being secluded to coming back out and they have to completely shift and transform to a whole different kind of anatomy really um so yeah that's what i'm seeing and beautiful pink chalcedony with creativity self-expression and life is your canvas this is absolutely beautiful i feel like that's where you're targeting your energy is towards that self-expression we're really talking about creativity and pointed creativity too and that is exactly what self-expression is it is um learning exactly how you want to express yourself in a way that makes you feel empowered um life is your canvas i feel like I feel like that's really talking about how, you know, as you've transformed and alchemized things, now you want to express that in a way. Um, something that I'm hearing is like some of you guys might make your experiences into art or music or you might write it. Um, somebody here does poetry specifically, which is interesting. Um, even for some people, like one person that I know, you know, they will do... Um, 
you know, running or something like that. And that is their expression. Specifically what they do, I loved this. Um, during Thanksgiving, what they did was each mile they dedicated to a different person. And even the people who hurt them, they spend that mile appreciating them for what they did in their lives and the way that they impacted them and the lessons that they were able to learn. Obviously, I'm not saying run a mile um, <laughs> or more than that, um, unless that's something that calls to you, uh, not me personally. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, there's so many forms of expression. I feel like you're finding your niche in your expression. Um, and that's going to kind of be derived from some form of appreciation for yourself and others and your life experiences um, in certain facets. So yeah, um, your angels, the presence that they're showing in your life right now is helping you to find your niche of creativity, helping you to feel the abundance within you and find it externally, as well as kind of taking lessons and allowing them to really alchemize. So this is absolutely beautiful energy and I am going to move into the tarot now. So far I've really loved this and I feel like it's made a lot of sense having the snake as well um, with death and rebirth because there's been a lot of um, kind of discovering of how we want to move forward and letting things kind of shift and go along the way with the flow. Okay, I'm going to drink some water and then we're going to get all up into these tarot cards, I promise. <laughs> I love my cat. She's so cute. I think she deserves an award for being the cutest cat. Okay, anyway. Um, why is she so adorable? Anyway. <laughs> if you have cat pics, send them to me. <laughs> I love cats. Okay, so. Why don't I explain what we're doing first? I'm getting carried away, whisked away. Um... So these tarot cards are going to tell me a little bit more about where your guides are leading you right now, kind of the direction of it. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, you might want to watch the, the other pile just cause I'm sorry, this is just divine. Um, we have the tower. What I love about, wait, didn't we have a crown? Yeah, we had a crown on your gold and apple with rewriting right here. And there's a crown above this tower, if you see that. Um, and kind of what I'm seeing is these ideas of how you weren't worthy are crumbling down. Um, with the tower being upright, it's something that's kind of falling that you weren't quite aware of. Um, but it's kind of this idea of you don't always know... <sighs> Okay, how do I want to word this? Your angels are guiding you in the direction of seeing that things were built on an unstable foundation. That way they can tear it down with you to help you rebuild. And um, the reason that this is a bit of a dramatic kind of feeling is because there needs to be that kind of shake awake. That way you can recognize that it's time for you to alchemize and rebuild and look at the kind of constructs that we hold in our minds in order to release them. There might be certain things that you've held on to for a really long time. People, places, things, um, ideas of yourself that have actively held you back and the world is saying, no, that's gone now, we are rebuilding. And that's why the crown is remaining levitating above it. It's because your divinity will never leave. Your deservingness will always be there. Your beauty, your abundance, it will always be there, but it will continually shift. And that is something that has to kind of set in at this time. So where else are they guiding you? Beautiful. We have the eight of swords in reverse. What I love about seeing the eight of swords in reverse is that you are actively choosing to take off the blindfold and walk away. The thing about the eight of swords as a card itself is talking about how, you know, we, if you see there are these eight swords and they're blindfolded right there and they're just kind of sitting there. The thing about that is that they put themselves there and they kind of like bound themselves there knowing that at any point they can unbound themselves and walk away but it's these mental patterns that we lock ourselves in that make us feel 
unable to shift because um, we kind of get stuck in the idea of comfort something that um that I channeled recently was um, getting so comfortable with discomfort that we no longer notice that it's uncomfortable um, and I feel like that's why spirit is shifting that and they're shaking that up because it's time to no longer be comfortably uncomfortable and instead be comfortably comfortable um, which is why they're giving you the power and the strength to walk away before things fully collapse um, oh that's interesting yeah and where else are they leading you <laughs> yeah they're putting you on a nice little sailboat with the six of swords they're putting you on a sailboat past these harsher waters and they're leading you to higher waters they are letting you kind of walk away as things are shaking and crumbling and they're kind of giving you this way out of um clarity and guidance and letting you kind of see that you deserve better and bringing along the people who are good for you people who are impacting you in positive ways people who mean something to you experiences that mean something to you the alchemization of your past and letting yourself take the lessons that were needed in order to move forward something that I am feeling is this creativity card as well as abundance I feel like you're moving into a place of abundance I feel really drawn to get some clarifiers here so I'm gonna get out my other tarot deck and just kind of pull a few clarifiers for you. Um, okay, I'm gonna shuffle these real quick. Sorry if it's loud, just want the best for you. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna clarify all of these. Because I feel like there's more that I need to tell you. And, yeah. Um, okay. Cool. That's fine. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ, my legs are sore. I went climbing recently. Quite a time. Okay. So, for the clarification of the tower, we have the Three of Wands. For the Eight of Swords, in reverse, we have Temperance in reverse. And let's get a clarifier for the Six of Swords, please, Spirit. Thank you for that, Sass. All right. And we have the Knight of Pentacles. Here, wait. Which way does Spirit want that? Yeah, I felt like it was upright. Sorry. Sometimes I just fly them around and see which way they end up. Because it just, it felt like upright energy. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, especially with the... Okay, you know what? I'm not going to go justifying everything that I do. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, what I love about this is... I was saying that you're kind of able to walk away before things get bad. And I think that the reason for this, being clarified by the Three of Wands, is because you see before it all hits the fan that you deserve better. You see that you are this beautiful blooming flower. You see that you are a beautiful person. And you don't deserve to be in these situations that are built on unstable foundations that you deserve better. And that things are also not going well. And therefore you have to face things head on. We have this cow... Or is it a ram? I'm not 100% sure, but it's got flower eyes, which is super cute. But the ram, whenever it's in the uh, spiritual medicine, like animal medicine context, it talks about facing things head on. And I feel like before things crumble before you, you're facing them head on and bowing out because you recognize your worst. With temperance in reverse, what I'm seeing is that you have the hope that you need. And therefore, you are now shifting into a place and you are alchemizing what you need to in order to be able to step out of this. Um, with temperance being in reverse, I'm feeling like you're no longer sitting in some kind of contemplative energy and instead you are bouncing out of there. With the Knight of Pentacles, you're moving forward with more contemplation this time because the Pentacles is the slowest moving energy. With also this Pentacle kind of looking like the Sun card, I feel like you're moving forward with clarity and contemplation. And you're not just rushing to another random shore to end up at another unstable location. You are actively choosing to go to a place that is going to help you find more stability. Um, and that's something that you're actively seeking out at this time. So, 
that is everything that I'm seeing for this portion of the reading. I'm now going to go move over to the extended to see what you are manifesting, what your angels are doing behind the scenes, and your animal spirit guide. So thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the extended or in the next reading. Thank you.